night beat starts right now. What a weather night. The storms, the rain at least, and the hail appear to have moved out of our viewing area. But boy, did they leave a mark earlier in the night. Adam Kasky joins us now to talk about what we have seen this evening. Yeah, we had a few severe thunderstorms pop up, uh, dropping hail typically up to about the size of quarters and even some straight line winds, which were thunderstorm related and not thunderstorm related because the cold front moved through and now that activity is out of San Antonio. So we're in the clear. Those of you that have kids that were spooked fur babies that were spooked, yeah. you know, your pets, it's okay. It's all done. Now it's just some gusty winds, but the hail was really the story when it hit town. Yeah. And you've got some pictures you're going to show. Us. I do have some pictures. Yes. And we've got this video from the Alamo dome during uh, the varsity this, basketball. This is game. during the state semifinals. Uh, hail started coming in and actually there you see it on the floor there. They actually had to wipe wipe it up at certain points during the game. They believe it came through the exhaust system wow, like the in the dome. Huh? They don't think it was necessarily the roof itself leaking, but they're going to check it out tomorrow. They think it came through the exhaust system, but that's not something you expect to see when you're at a high school basketball game. That's yeah. a first. Definitely not. And then you talk about all the stuff that we saw all over town today, but you heard it. It was super loud. We had people even from St. Hedwig. My mom, who lives there, also was telling me yeah. how loud it was. I mean, it was just everywhere. Yeah, this is what I witnessed on my dinner break, actually, tonight. Marble-sized hail or dime-sized hail. Wicked wind, the gusts and the sheets of rain leading to some interesting viewing. My <laughs> dogs weren't big fans of the storm, but I'm guessing my lawn will be, though. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? We wanted this rain to get here, but maybe uh -huh. not like this. And now right now we're getting a live look at, at the outage map right now. It says there, according to CPS, 176 active outages uh, right now. But here's the thing. So it's holding pretty steady right now. But I was talking to Adam Kasky about this, and the issue is that it's the wind, the wind that we might get later on that might change the outage numbers and made, make them go up perhaps. Yeah, and you know, a lot of the outages that we have are related to the cold front winds and not the winds from the actual thunderstorms. So you look at the amount of customers without power on this map. It's not just Bear County and CPS coverage area, but where you didn't even get a thunderstorm in Valverde County, Del Rio area. I mean, we're talking 500 customers without power. Eagle Pass area, Maverick County, 2,000. That's not a very populated county to have 2,000 customers without power. Atascosa County, about 100 customers, but you, you get the idea. It's some of those non thunderstorm wind gusts that caused these power outages. And this product saying it's still about 14,000 without power in San Antonio. Here's a look at some of those pictures. We we're talking about the hail earlier. Converse quarter size hail. And thank you for posting these and also the reference of the coin because that's the coins are the best uh, references to compare hail size because a quarter and bigger is considered damaging. That's a little bit bigger than a quarter. Uh, southeast side near WW White and South Cross. Here's another one almost quarter size. Riz Rigsby and Comanche Park. And we just have more of these. You can go to KSAT.com and we have uh, more photos. This, I believe, was from the Del Rio area. There wasn't a location, but due to the time it was posted and the winds that we had toppled over that uh, children's play area, wind damage as well. And this is why we have those power outages. Look at McQueenie tree across the road and it's not just isolated. This is in San Antonio on the northwest side of town and you go to Converse. That power pole, I believe, should be upright, but it's leaning over off to the side, and that's run another reason why we're having these issues. We'll take a close look at radar, the future cast, and talk more about these gusty winds because you'll be hearing them outside all night tonight when they actually subside. And cooler air is moving in. We'll get to all of it in just a bit. All right, thank you, Adam. We have some breaking news right now. I want to get to San Antonio Police looking for a man who they say shot his significant other in the middle of a parking lot. So this was around the apartments on Pleasanton Road near Gerald Avenue near South Cross. Officers are saying that a witness heard the man and the woman arguing, then heard gunshots. Now the woman was taken to Bamsey with a shot to the back. Yeah, the suspect drove away. Police are still collecting evidence and statements, and they are looking for that suspect tonight. I haven't seen this guy in years, so and he's running up on me with a hoodie. I've had no issues and he gets released from prison and I start. And now she's looking over her shoulder. The DA's office says that her attacker has cut his ankle monitor and is on the run. That Bear County woman has a protective order against the man she says is her ex-boyfriend. That 
brings up a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. So how was he able to get out of jail after violating that protective order? That's the question the night team's John Paul Barajas is asking tonight. I feel like I have to change my whole life around for this individual because he, nobody can keep him behind bars. Heather Martinez says this is a reality. Life watching out for her ex, Simon Villa. Because he's threatened my, my life, me, my family, my to kidnap my nephews. Villa was arrested on charges of assault and stalking in 2020. He bonded out late last year. But Martina says he turned back up at her home last week and tried grabbing her. I just screamed and luckily I got away from him that night. She explains he was back the very next night. He kept messing with my window. He was about to get in and I was just asking the operator, like, are y'all close? Like anything? And right when I heard him about to still grab my shot. That night, Villa was arrested for felon in possession of a firearm and attempted burglary. Yet he bonded out again and now he's on the run after cutting his ankle monitor. He got a protective order against him from this victim and he's obviously continued to break that. They are generally required to set a bond. I mean, there, there are certainly problems with laws around around bonds that need to be addressed. Christian Hendrickson with the Bear County District Attorney's Office says there are few circumstances where a bond can be refused. Meaning for now, Martinez waits for Via to be caught. It's scary, like you just, you're always watching your back. You. You're just, li I'm literally like the anxiety. Hendrickson tells us the DA's office recommended Via's bond to be at $50,000 per charge. The judge decided on 50,000 total instead. He adds, if Via's caught, there's a good chance he won't be given a bond the next go around. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. John Paul, thank you. A man is going to spend the rest of his life in prison for killing a good Samaritan. Leopoldo Mora was convicted of shooting and killing Kenneth Salazar while he was helping a stranger fix his vehicle that was in June of 2021 outside of a West Side motel. Yesterday, a Bear County grand jury only took about an hour to convict Mora of murder. And today, that same jury took four hours to decide Mora's prison sentence. Now, Mora's 37 years old now, and he's just going to be eligible for parole in 30 years. They're not gambling to get high. These are not users. These are kids that are, it could be over-the-counter drugs. It can be prescription drugs, you know, body pains, insomnia, whatever they're dealing with. And the pill kills them because fentanyl doesn't play games. No, it doesn't. It's a ruthless and deadly drug. That was Joe Jones, who you just heard from. He's president of the San Antonio Firefighters Association. That group now behind a new billboard in Selma that it hopes is going to shed light on the dire consequences of taking fentanyl. It shows 17-year-old Danica Caprosi, who lost her life to fentanyl poisoning. Now, in context, one dose of fentanyl is 50 times more powerful than heroin and 100 times more powerful than morphine. Danica's billboard is at I-35 and Evans Road in Selma if you want to go check it out. And by the way, our coverage of the fentanyl crisis, that continues online. It's a big subject. We want you to scan this QR code on your screen because from there, it's going to take you to the Fighting Fentanyl tab. That's a new series that we launched. We've posted several stories that show how fentanyl has affected teens, a local school district, and also a local police department. Getting paid to keep the noise down. Restaurants and bars with outdoor music venues are soon going to be able to apply for a noise mitigation, mitigation grant. Yeah, the night team's Patty Santos tells us it's the newest idea by the city of San Antonio to lock down a more permanent level of loud. 20 bars and restaurants with outdoor music venues could get up to $7,500 each to help them keep the noise down. I think it's a great idea. The Beethoven Manor Court in the heart of the King William District is at arm's length from homes. Management believes it's a great fit for the city's new small business noise mitigation grant. We want to be a, a test case here at Beethoven to see how these potential sound mitigation efforts could go ahead and, and drop the complaints or, or, or bring them down to zero. It's the latest effort to help neighborhoods and music venues coexist. The city of San Antonio has tried several options. A noise ordinance task force, hiring a music expert, and even a separate pilot program to find hotspots for complaints. Something like this was discussed during the task force meetings with how can we help small businesses who want to comply, uh, have, a, have some funds or, or get some funding to modify uh, their areas. Small businesses that meet criteria would qualify for financial help to keep the noise down through equipment or renovations. Hiring a sound expert is encouraged, but not required. If they can purchase the um, 
acoustical paneling or curtains or better speakers that help them be that neighbor, we want to help them bridge the gap um, to be able to afford it. City Council approved the $150,000 pilot program in last year's budget. Applications are open this month. The first checks will go out in April and city staff will release findings later in the summer. The hotspots seem to be where they've identified for the last two years. It's uh, St. Mary's Strip, it's down here, it's some other key areas, so why not go ahead and, and treat those hotspots? Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Can I talk to you guys about your recent inspection? Uh, I, don't, I have no idea about that, sir. Are you not? What was going on behind the kitchen door at that convenience store that earned it a low score? Tim Gerber has some questions. Rodent droppings inside a convenience store, plus improper cooling procedures and several more violations adding up to a low score for that business. Tonight, Team's Tim Gerber didn't get many answers when he went to see what was going on behind their kitchen door. Shop and Save, located in the 1300 block of North Trinity, earned a low score of 72 on their January inspection. The inspector found food in a cooler temped between 107 and 138 degrees. The inspector reminded the worker food must be cooled to 41 degrees within six hours of being made. Eggs were left out at room temperature for an unknown time and frozen chicken was improperly being thawed at room temp. There was a leak at a sink that was causing water to pool in a 10 foot area and the inspector found rodent droppings. Hello. Hi. I stopped in this week to ask some questions, but the man behind the counter said he wasn't in charge and didn't even work there. Yeah, I'm just here for uh, some guys. He's uh, off today. He said he couldn't answer my questions, but did offer this one response. So you don't know if they fixed the issue with the rodents and think, the plumbing? I think he's, everything is fixed. A follow-up inspection confirmed the plumbing was fixed and some cleaning had been done, but the inspector found lots of roaches on the wall above a sink and microwave and a broken refrigerator with a foul odor. We also noticed they hadn't posted the latest inspection report. These two higher scores are from last year. A second inspection was ordered for March. Golden Walk, located in the 1400 block of Southwest Loop 410, earned a 76. The inspector found a moldy eggplant in the cold hold unit. It and all the other food in the same bin were tossed out. There was black and yellow mold-like buildup in the ice machine and cleaning chemicals were being stored directly above soaked mushrooms located in a bucket on the floor below. But perhaps most disturbing, the inspector watched an employee crush a silverfish bug with their hand and then continue to prep raw chicken with the same gloves on. The inspector stepped in and told the worker to wash their hands and change their gloves. Another live silverfish bug was found on a food sauce bucket on the prep table. The entire kitchen area was also in need of a thorough cleaning and organization. A follow-up inspection was required three days later to ensure all the issues were addressed. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's take a live look outside now, shall we? All right, that's I-10, 59 degrees. Okay, we're looking at that picture right now, very different from what we were seeing, hearing, and experiencing just about an hour ago. Yeah, let's take some of that video that we have of right outside the KSAT 12 studios. As the rains were coming down, mixed with some hail, and yes, there were a lot of us who were going outside to see if there's any damage to the vehicles out there. But there were times where there you see some of the hail, but there were times where the rain just coming down in sheets. Al. Yes. Yeah, with the rain, I mean, wind driven rain and some wind driven hail and the winds were also related just to the sheer fact that the cold front was moving and actually the highest wind gust at the airport earlier was from the cold front. And then, well, we did see one slightly higher from a thunderstorm. We'll get to that in a minute with Mia. She's got all the wind information. She's the wind pro right now. We'll get to here in a second. Let's talk about the line of storms stretching from Oklahoma southward all the way down to San Antonio, causing severe weather along most of the extent of that line of storms. Right now, last little activity that we have is not severe. This is all coming to an end and near Luling, just one downpour right along I-10. Not a big deal, actually, just a good little 
soaking shower just north of Gonzales and near Moulton. I know you had some stronger winds and heavier rain earlier. Even some pockets of hail uh, did exist in the storms east of town, but this is all just light activity that's coming to an end. This is all the tail end of it. It's all over with. Here's our future cast showing what's left over of it, which is even a little aggressive on the future cast here. It's overdoing it a little bit, but either way, it's all coming to an end, coming to a close tonight, and the focus is now going to be shifting to the cooler temperatures and even some gusty winds. Really quickly before we get to the winds, rain chances, nothing all the way through the weekend, tomorrow through the weekend, and then a little blip, a little possibility by Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, we were talking about the rain earlier. Mia, we're talking about thunderstorm wind gusts and non thunderstorm wind gusts and what's the situation from here on out? Yeah, exactly. The big focus throughout the remainder of the night for a lot of us going to be that wind. Some of the storms only affected part of South Central Texas, but most of us were able to see those gusty northwest winds pick up after the front moved through 56 mile per hour wind gusts. The peak here in San Antonio. Check out Del Rio that actually should say 73 miles per hour for the peak wind gust that was recorded earlier this afternoon, and that wasn't even associated with a thunderstorm that was just after that potent cold front pushed through the far western reaches of the area that also brought in some West Texas dust into parts of South Central Texas as well. Taking a look at those wind gusts right now, generally in the range of about 25 to 30 miles per hour, 40 miles per hour, though, over in the Lost Maples area throughout the remainder of the night. We will continue to see some of those gusts generally upwards of 35 to maybe even close to 40 miles per hour here in San Antonio. Those gusts will last through at least the first half of the day tomorrow and then I I think after lunchtime, we'll start to see those winds calm down just a little bit more. But something else that those northwest winds are doing, pumping in some of that drier air, dew points in the 30s for the most part here in Bear County. That's 30 degrees, quote unquote, lower than where we were this time last night. So it is going to feel a bit more comfortable out there, especially by morning drive time tomorrow. Also, that cooler air moving in. We're at 60 degrees right now. That's 14 degrees cooler than where we were this time last night. So as we continue, Continue to see those temperatures fall through the overnight hours. We'll wake up to the 40s and low 50s. Probably will want the long sleeve. Stepping out tomorrow, plenty of sunshine will be the theme as we get ready to wrap up the work week for your Friday. Daytime highs for the most part, looking to climb into the 70s, around 76 officially here in San Antonio for that forecast high. We'll take this full screen for you. A look at your seven day forecast here. This weekend, more sunshine for the most part. Some chilly mornings leading in afternoon highs in the 80s, and then we'll continue to see that temperature trend warm into next week. A little bit of morning fog possible as early as Sunday morning, and then we'll monitor for another front to move in sometime by the middle of next week, guys. All right, Mia, thank you so much. You know, our weather coverage continues online right now. Viewers are sending in pictures of the hail from a little earlier, and you know what? We want to invite you to submit your photos as well. Just look for this story on KSAT.com. Our viewers do such a good job yes. sending in. Yeah. their weather video. All right. The Spurs, man, they didn't care about the storm. Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah They were raining threes on top of the Indiana Pacers. Very well That's put. what was going on tonight. Yeah. Spurs, Pacers. Devin Vassell played in his first game since January, and he had an excellent return. And the Class 4A state semis over at the Dome was disrupted by some rain and hail coming up. A wild scene here. Some rain and hail fell inside the Alamo Dome through exhaust fan vents delaying the Wagner girls playoff game while they cleaned it up in big board sports. Mitch Johnson was acting head coach for the Spurs for his home game in a month. Coach Pop is out with a non COVID illness and his top assistant Brett Brown was also out with an illness. First quarter, Kata Bates Diop drives for a right hand reverse layup and one. That was a very tough shot. Free throw was good. Three point play and we're tied at 11. Then at the 635 mark, Devin Vassell entered the game. His first contest is undergoing a left knee procedure in early January and his first game played since January 2nd and that's his first bucket. A wide open slam dunk thanks to 
to a Zach Collins bounce pass. That was nice. Pacers led 29-21 after one. Second quarter, Spurs running Malachi Branham feeds Jeremy Sohan for a slam. We're tied at 46. This after the Spurs trolled by 11 points and Pacers led 54-52 at halftime. Third frame, Sohan down low, kicks it out to Devontae Graham for a triple and the Spurs lead 59-54. Moments later, Graham from three again nails it and draws the foul. Free throw good, four point play. Spurs go up 63-54. Graham feeling it, fires another triple, no good, but Sohan slams it back through. Offensive board and some jam for a 10 point Spurs lead. Late in the quarter, Vassell drives and switches hands for a sweet layup as they go up 11. Vassell had 10 of the Spurs, 31 third quarter points and they led 83-70 after three. Fourth frame, Graham from downtown. The silver and black lead by 18, their largest lead of the game. Spurs win their second straight and in their five game home slide by the final of 110 to 99. Sohan had 22 points and 13 boards for his first career double-double, and Vassell had 18 points in his return. It's not been the, you know, the best season. There's been a lot of ups and downs. We're a young team, of course, um, but, you know, we always try and we always want to win, so I think, you know, winning in Utah in this game is, is really important, and I think we all believe that, you know, we can win the next two games as well and uh, keep it going. Up next, the Spurs will host the Rockets Saturday night at 7. In girls high school basketball, Wagner played Frisco Liberty in the UIL Class 4A state semis at the Dome tonight. The T-Birds down by six early before they start the takeoff. L.A. Sneed off the long rebound, gets it ahead to Savani Sancho for the scoop and score. A little later, Sancho from behind the arc for the catch and shoot three, and Wagner's only down one. Wagner turning up the D, Nia Williams with the steal, and she's taking it back for the layup and the lead. T-Birds up 15 to 14 after one, but the Red Hawks would take a five-point lead at halftime. In the third, Sneed trying to keep Wagner within striking distance as she drives to the hoop and puts it up and in, but the Red Hawks lead would grow to as many as 16 in the third, just too much for Wagner as their fantastic season comes to an end. 62-51 is the final. This was an amazing experience. It was an amazing high school to go to. I love the coaching staff, the community, my teammates. This is a family now. I'm never going to forget the time I had here. It just feels me to get back to this point and try to succeed to the next game. Well, you just didn't fall away. I mean, we had several shots in the first half that went in and went out. Uh, but, I mean, overall, I'm happy and proud of these kids. Clark Cougars will hit the court tomorrow night at 7 when they play Capel in the Class 6A state semis. Before that, Bernie will play Sunnyvale at 3 p.m. in the 4A state semis. All games will be played at the Alamo Dome. In women's college basketball, UTSA went on the road and beat the defending Conference USA champion Charlotte 49ers 80-59 to tonight. Jordan Jenkins led UTSA with 25 points. Freshman Sydney Love was next to 22. UTSA has won a season high four in a row heading into the Conference USA championship tournament next week. And how about this? The big Puma had his Canyon jersey retired after the break. It was a special day at New Braunfels Canyon High School where six-time Major League Baseball All-Star and Canyon alum Lance Berkman had his number 23 jersey retired at the Canyon baseball field. Lance graduated from Canyon in 1994 and then he went on to play 15 seasons in the bigs with the Astros, Yankees, Cardinals, and Rangers. He's honored to have his number 23 jersey retired and then had this advice for the Cougars baseball team. Enjoy this period of your life while you can. It goes by really quick. I mean, I think back to when I was here and just seems sometimes it seems like it was last week and sometimes it seems like forever ago. So it goes life goes by quick. Enjoy, you know, your experience playing high school baseball. The 2011 World Series champion Berkman threw out the first pitch before the Cougars hosted Dripping Springs. Lance is currently head baseball coach of the Houston Baptist Huskies. That is why he had that shirt on. Yes. I was trying to, like, that's why. Did he play for Connecticut? I don't, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You got it. We'll be right back. So before the storms hit, this is a look at our sunset near Woodlawn Lake. Taylor sent us in on KSAT Connect via the KSAT Weather Authority app. And we do have some West Texas dust that moved in along with the rain. So don't be surprised if your car's got that little bit of little layer of mud and dirt on it, that muddy rain that we get with that West Texas dust. And of course, we did have some tree damage from wind gusts and some large hail out there. It's all done with in the clear now. It's just going to be a gusty night and start to the day tomorrow. Near 80 for highs this weekend, low humidity, pleasant. All right, thank you. We got through it. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.